morning, this Wednesday morning, halfway through the week. I hope your week's going well, and I'm glad you could join us for Kings at Home Daily this morning. Let's pray and see what the Lord has for us today. Lord, thank you for your care and provision for our lives. Lord, thank you that you, uh, you're concerned about every aspect of our lives. Lord, we have the opportunity of, of entrusting to you everything, the, the whole panorama of our lives, Lord, we can entrust to you. Work, home, family, finances, Lord, we can bring them all to you. And I, this morning we're, we're here to start the day with you, and I pray you'd speak to us. We want to learn to trust you more, so please speak to us today, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going through the chapter 11 of Hebrews, the heroes of faith. And um, we've, we've got up to Moses, that giant of a figure in the Old Testament. Let's see what we can learn through this man. Imperfect, yeah, as we know. Um, and yet someone who God really used for his glory. Okay, here we go. So. Moses. Verse 23. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child. They weren't afraid of the king's edict. Fear can often keep you from faith. Fear can often keep you from trusting God. And well, it's probably one of, the, one of the key things that the enemy does. You know, fear that, 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 it, that it won't work out, that, that God won't show up. And, and so is a seed of fear in our hearts. It, it's worth noting that. Um, uh, because as Christians, I hope you've got the idea that, as, you know, we've been saying all through this week that for Christians, the walk of faith is not an easy one. Why? Because we've got an enemy. We've got en an enemy. In fact, we've got more greater enemy now uh, as Christians than we had before we became Christians. Uh, the world, the flesh, and the devil, that the, the New Testament tells us. The world, the culture around us, the flesh, <laughs> the way we are, we are, some of our natural instincts. The world, the flesh, and the, and, 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 and the devil. Well, goodness me, you know. Um, if, 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 if you don't, well, yeah, of course we believe in the devil. Most, most cultures of the world do. And as you look around the world, it's not hard to see why. There is a, really, really. Okay, so the world, the flesh, and the devil, we've got, we've got, um, we've got an enemy. And so trusting God is challenging at times. And we can be tempted to slip back. And that's what the writer to the Hebrews wants to uh, address uh, in this letter. Okay, so they, they weren't afraid of the king's edict. Bless them. By faith, Moses, when he'd grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be ill-treated along with the people of God rather than enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt. Good gracious me, look at this. Okay, put this into a modern context. He's a prince. He's born into a rich uh, culture. He, 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 all the trimmings are there. It's all there for the taking, for the having, for the enjoying. He, 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 there's no reason for him to, you know, he's, everything, all, everything he could ever want right there in front of him. He refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Why? He chose to, chose to be ill-treated along with God's people rather than enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin re regarding disgrace for Christ's sake of greater value. It's interesting, he, he, the writer of the Hebrews is now bringing in a Christian context. I mean, Moses didn't even know about Christ, but the Lord Jesus. He, he, these people of the Old, Old Testament, they were, they were trusting God. They were walking, as it were, at something of a distance. You know, we, we, we saw that earlier on in terms of the the temple and so on, God's presence, slightly unapproachable. These guys are walking at a bit of a distance. We're walking with the, 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 the Spirit of God in us, God's empowering presence in us, the Holy Spirit living in us. How much more should we be able to, uh, to, to make these kind of choices? He chose to be ill-treated with the people of God. That's happening in cultures all around the world now physical ill-treatment uh, for many, 
it might mean uh, some sort of little treatment for you in, in our culture, but it's happening all over the world. Chose to be ill-treated along with God's people rather than enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ. <laughs> there we are, you know, the, now that we're all part of the same line, as it were, coming through Scripture, the, the narrative of Scripture pointing to the Messiah. Greater value than the treasures of Egypt. Why? Because he was looking ahead to his reward. That's, that's that lovely, you know. It's, it, it's not wrong. In fact, it's right to be thinking, of, uh, what is our reward? Oh, the, the pleasures and joy of, of, of new heaven, new earth. But most of all, the wonder of knowing the Lord. I read a wonderful quote yesterday. I think it's C.S. Lewis. Um, many of the pleasures of the world are, they're, they're, they're great. Okay, we're not, we're not killed. Christians aren't killed. It's wonderful, you know, uh, a lovely meal with people and the beauty and, and relationships. But um, it, it's, this quote went something like this. Um, for, for the Christian, we, the Christian looks, looks uh, hang on, the Christian looks up the sunbeam to the glory of the sun. In other words, the, 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 the sunbeam is just, is, that's not the real thing. It's pointing to something else. The glory of the sun and the, some of the many of the joys of life that, that it, when if they become um, if, if if they become the main thing they become little idols because it's the glory of the Lord that is the main idol and I, so I love that it's it's not that it, you know when 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 we're blessed that's why Thanksgiving is so important when something good happens or we enjoy something we had a, a lovely experience a lovely day it's good to give thanks we're looking up the sunbeam to the glory of the sun I like that. I've probably quoted that rather wrong, um, but isn't that, it's a lovely thought, isn't it? That, that's why I have to say Thanksgiving is so important. Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you for that blessing. Thank you for that wonderful time there. Thank you. Up the sunbeam to the, the glory of the sun, the Lord Jesus. I don't know why. Why did I say that? I don't know. Oh, the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ of greater value than the treasures of Egypt. He was looking ahead to his reward. There we are. By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. Oh, this is the crazy thing about Christian life, isn't it? How do you see something that's invisible? By faith. It's you see, you, 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 you've caught a glimpse in your heart of something. It, it's, you, it's not tangible yet, but you know it's coming. And for generations, Christians have lived like that. And you can read about it in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, where it, it, 2 Corinthians 4, 16. Therefore, we don't lose heart. Um, yeah. Though outwardly, we're wasting away. Yep. <laughs> yeah, inwardly, we're being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles, hmm, they don't always feel light and momentary, do they? Are achieving for us an eternal glory that out, far outweighs them all. So, we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. See, what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. That's a strange verse, isn't it? How do you see? Do you know what I'm saying? What we physically see around us, it, 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 it's, it's got a shelf life passing away and it's very obvious in many areas it's at the moment um but we're we're believing for something more we are, are going to come back to this later in the week my time is whizzing away but we've got this this is the heart of faith that we really understand that god is at work not just in us but in the world around us to bring about something beautiful for his glory ultimately new heaven new Earth. And dear Moses caught a glimpse. He caught a glimpse. Um, he left Egypt, persevering. He saw him who is invisible. He caught a glimpse, a vision of, of the Lord and his purposes on the earth. Um, I've, I've got a, this is really slow, but it's good stuff, isn't it? Lord, oh, give us a glimpse today of your glory. We don't just want to see the the good things of life, the sunbeams. We want to tra our eyes to travel up the sunbeam to the glory of the sun. And we want to say, Lord Jesus, you're, you're wonderful. Lord, you're, 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 
you've made all things well and our, our attention let our attention be upon you lord give us a greater glimpse of you your glory your majesty lord uh, will be ruined for anything else keep our eyes on lord keep us with our eyes fixed on you whatever we're going through today i pray we want to have a, a, a big vision a, a vision that warms our hearts of who you are in jesus name amen wow we'll really try and make more progress tomorrow um tomorrow's thursday i hope you will join us then bye for now